Hey everyone, it's Denise Brown and this is Caregiver Support Live. So happy to have my co-host with us today. Hi, Jennifer Ritchie. Hello. It's so nice to be here and I'm so sorry I was not at our first our first episode, but I was ill, so very happy to be here. And I'm happy that you're feeling better. Thank you. Jennifer and I have both been in personal caregiving situations and have been supporting family caregivers for several years. And we thought it would be helpful to offer our perspectives and insights to you when you are encountering those awful challenges that come up during a caregiving experience. And you can write to us with your questions. And our email address is questions at caringourway.com. And we'll come up with answers for you. We just want you to know that there are answers for you or possibilities. Okay, so let's start with our first question for today. Are you ready, Jennifer? I am ready. Here we go. After our mom died, our family gathered to divvy up our parents' knickknacks. One of and their father had already died. One of our family members took two knickknacks for her grandchildren who hadn't taken the time to visit our parents for years, even though they lived minutes away. They also didn't show up for their funerals. Can I ask her to give them back? What do you think, Jennifer? Well, my first thoughts about this were I had lots of questions, like how old were the grandchildren? And, <laughs> you know, and then I just sort of had to take a step back. And so like the simple answer for me is, can you? Yes. Should you? No. <laughs> um, I think it's like asking yourself why you want them back. Is it because getting those, and, and really we're talking knickknacks, not like big sentimental I mean that, that's what I'm assuming so could getting those back bring back your loved one I mean is that how is that why you want them back no it's you know more than likely if you did ask for them back it would create a huge tension a huge rift in the family that is not worth it um and we don't know you know, we, we make the assumption that people want things for certain reasons and we don't know why this person took them. Um, you know, maybe she wanted them as a token for her grandchildren and didn't really think anything of it. Um, in my opinion, the time to say something to the family member was in the moment when they all met. So that's my take. I would say to your point about what is it really about, what struck me is it's a representation of unfairness. Mm, interesting. It's fair if everyone who was there helping received everything that is available to them. It's unfair if someone who didn't help or support gets anything. Right. Anything isn't related to the value of the knickknacks. It's related to the value of help and support. And if you didn't provide help and support, you mm -hmm. shouldn't get anything. That's fair. Yeah. That's what struck me. It was about fairness and then trying to make it fair. Well, you didn't help, so you don't get anything. That's fair. And if you took something without helping and supporting, that's not fair. Mm -hmm. The other piece of it is when is the right time to actually have the conversation? Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure that in the moment, that can be the right time. Mm -hmm. I guess what I was thinking is to, to sit with it. Yeah. Give yourself time to figure out, okay, is it worth it? That's really the big question. Yeah. We're talking about value. And so here's the other piece of it. And that's worth, is it worth it for you to go and ask for something back yeah. and, and have that even make what sounds like some difficult relationships even more difficult? Yeah. Like, is this going to just make things worse Yes. for knickknacks that might not really mean anything to have them? It's more the idea of that fairness. I think that's a great, a great way to think about it. It also reminds me that there is pain and unfairness. It hurts 
yeah. when life feels unfair. And rather than focusing on the knickknacks, I would say, turn to focus on healing the hurt, mm -hmm. this hurt. So we have this daily healing plan. It's around naming the hurt. And the hurt is the betrayal and the unfairness. And then what can you do to, to help with that hurt? Write out how unfair it is, the betrayal that someone receives something they don't deserve and how you couldn't do anything about it. You had to let it go. You had to let it happen. So it's the other piece of it is I didn't get a voice in this, mm -hmm. which is also unfair. Yeah. So whatever it is that helps you release it, because what you want to think about is rather than hurting, I'm going to use strategy so that I feel something different at peace, accepting in love, whatever it is that feels opposite of that pain. Yes. And, and I would add to that, you know, often when we're in that pain, our first response to someone else is to think the worst of them. And it's like, what if we thought the best of this person? She was doing the best she could. You know, if we thought of her with total compassion, now that's really hard to do in the moment. But if you really, you know, if you take some time, like you said, um, and just ask like, what would love do in this situation? What would compassion do in this situation? Probably not ask for them back, probably forgive and let go. So yeah, I think it's like looking at the long-term ramifications of this too, you know, could really get sticky. And it's really about, oh, I'm sorry, Jennifer, I didn't no, mean to. It's about taking care of the hurt that you feel. Yeah. And I am not sure that getting those knickknacks back is going to actually resolve the hurt. It could actually add more hurt to you. Yeah. And that's why I think it's okay to take time to think through what's the right next step for me. And it could be in a year, you're still thinking about those knickknacks and you think, you know what? Gosh, darn it. I don't care about those grandchildren. I want the knickknacks back. Ask for the knickknacks back. Yeah. I think working through the hurt, the knickknacks are representing something painful has happened. Focus on the pain and then give yourself time to think through hmm, when is the right time to ask for those knickknacks back. I think sometimes just the idea that we give ourselves permission to noodle on it. Yes. The yes. choice about what we want to do and the choice around the right time can be helpful too. And also maybe down the road, they have a conversation and say to this person, you know, it really hurt when you took those and you didn't provide help. And I don't want them back, but I just want you to know that in the moment, that's how it felt. That's perfect. That's part of healing to be able yeah. to express that. And it's picking the time when you can express it. And I love that you say, I don't want the knickknacks back. I just want to let you know how it felt mm -hmm. for that to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we've got that one. Yeah, I do too. Here we go. Here's the next one. How do I respond when people tell me to take care of myself? Quite honestly, it's an infuriating question. I don't want to bark at them to mind their own business. So I end up saying nothing. Help me with a good answer. Okay. So the question really is when others ask us, whether or not they're taking, we're taking care of ourselves. How do we want to respond? I feel like the key word in this question was infuriating. I thought it was so interesting. And that just brought up lots of questions. All of these questions bring up more questions in my mind. Why is this so infuriating? Is it because they're not taking care of themselves? They don't have time. They're swamped. That's probably the likely reason. Um, you know, is it because they are taking care of themselves and they're just sick of people telling them that? Is it because they have no help? You know, they probably don't. So um, I sort of was coming up with a couple different things that people could say. Um, one being like, I would love to take care of myself, but it's tough to do that when I don't have any backup or any help. Are you offering? Are you offering to help? You know, 
or if you're offering, I would love to, you know, take you up on that. Um, you know, the other thing it could just be, thank you, end of sentence and, and move on. And like, let's not give more meaning to this than it, than it has. Um, you know, I, I posed this question to another person and, and she said, maybe just saying, thank you, I will, and moving on is self-care because you're not giving any energy and anger to the question to begin with, or to the statement to begin with. Um, I do think also that people really do want to help. They just don't know how. And if we can tell them specifically how they can help, that always is a better option. This person's not necessarily offering, but if it was an offer to be really specific, I would love some help on Saturday at noon. Can you come over and I'll run to the gym, you know, or something like that. So those were my thoughts. So I have had people say this to me regularly when I was caring for my parents and it made me crazy, made me crazy. It was not helpful. Mm -hmm. I did. I felt like it was a judgment. And I will say, honestly, I gained weight when I was caring for my parents and I probably didn't look that good. Mm. And that was the best I could do. That literally was yeah. the best I could do. And if someone were to give me that well, are you taking care of yourself? It <laughs> sounded so judgmental and so clueless. Mm, like someone yes. didn't get it. And it was someone that just read that family caregivers don't take care of themselves. Well, that must be Denise. She's not taking care of herself. I'll have to remind her that. My gosh, the, the amount of people that would say, Remember to take care of yourself when I would share about a difficult experience, a difficult situation. It was never helpful. It mm -hmm. was never helpful for anyone to say that to me. Never. Yeah. <laughs> also like handing you another thing to do. Yeah. Well, and I didn't ask you, I didn't yeah. ask you, what should I do in this situation? I literally did not yeah. ask. It felt judgmental. It felt like unsolicited advice and it mm -hmm. felt inappropriate. Yeah. And I still, I guess what this person that's writing in, I very much resonate with that question of what do I respond when someone says that to me? And I, I guess looking back, I'm not sure. I ignored when I just ignored it when people said it to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that that was most appropriate because then I just bottled it in. I guess we could say, I am, I have a yoga class on Saturday morning. When can I expect you to come by and be with mom so I can mm -hmm. make it to the yoga class? Or I am taking care of myself. Because what kind of answer? is really, I think about saying back to them, I am taking care of myself. And that feels so like icky inside. Like, like I shouldn't have to defend myself to you, you know? Right. Yes. Yes. It, it, it does. It does feel a little. Yeah. So. What's interesting. I just did a workshop for family caregivers and healthcare professionals around the six stages of caregiving. And there's a key word within each stage, which is our coping strategy. And then in the very first stage, the key word is ask. And the coping strategy then becomes ask questions, including of ourselves. So I asked the attendees to put in questions that they ask family caregivers. And people were saying, are you taking care of yourself? And I oh, did gosh. say to the attendees, I want to let you know, as a family caregiver, that's a question that drove me nuts. Mm -hmm. I think we just have to give grace that everybody is taking care of themselves the best that they can. And I guess the response then maybe is a little bit of educating, which is I am doing my best. And that question sounds like a judgment to me. And I'd much rather feel supported by you than judged. Mm. A better question for you to ask me is how can I support you right now? Yes. How does that sound as the answer to the question? I love that. And, you know, how can I, how can I support you? How can I help? 
you know, what do you need? Not let me know what you need because yes. no caregiver will call you up and let you know what they need. Yeah. Um, at least not in a positive way. Yes. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I really, part of what I want to do this year is educate people that support caregivers about you need to tell them what you can do for them or ask them specifically how can I help you get to the gym? How can I help you take a shower? How can I help you, you know, all those things that you can't do now, what can I do specifically rather than let me know what you need? Cause that's the flat thing that people always say. So I love that answer. Okay. So now I'm going to repeat it and let's see if I get it right the second time. Okay. I am taking care of myself. Okay. Okay, I'm going to add in something so you can tell me what you think of this. Here's here's the answer. I am taking care of myself, including in this moment, by telling you the question you just asked me feels like a judgment. I'd much rather feel supported than judged. I'd much rather you ask me, how can I help you? How can I support you? Love it. Okay. For those of you who are watching and listening to our show, please let us know if you use that response, what happens. And if you have suggestions for other responses, please let us know. Yeah, it's interesting because we have not discussed these questions before we jump on. And, and so to see the different um, thoughts about them is so fascinating. It's just always a good reminder for me that we all come from our own perspective, yeah. which then puts a different spin on what's best for us. And really what we're looking for is what's the best answer for you in your situation? Yeah. And as we talk it out, I hope we give you inspiration to find the best answer for you. Yeah. And options, you know, and options. And you might come up with a couple different options. It could be you tell your sister something different than you tell your friend, than you tell a colleague. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here's our third question. My Carrie won't agree to hire help, which is really upsetting. When she has help, I get a break. What can I do? All right. I have an example of this exact situation that I would like to share. Um, I think this is really common with parents, um, elderly parents who don't want to be a burden and not realizing that they are then putting the burden on you to do what they don't want to be a burden about. Um, and my grandfather was very much that way. He didn't want to be a bother. He didn't want anyone having to go out of their way to do anything, even though everything we were doing was, you know, making special arrangements to, to help him. Um, and we needed someone, he was in an assisted living. We needed someone to have more eyes on him and companionship and because otherwise he would just sit in the room all day and he may not go out for meals and things like that. So it wasn't any kind of like skilled help we need. We just needed someone to sit and talk with him and um, just a friend. And so he did not want that. Um, but we just got creative and we, we hired someone just kind of a, let's, let's just take a couple days and see how this works. And we, we introduced him to, this gentleman that, that we met and um, said, this is our friend. We just wanted to introduce you. He's just going to kind of hang out and get to know you and see what this place is like. And he brought his dog with him and it was, it was just sort of this non-therapeutic, but very therapeutic interaction. And my grandpa loved him. And so we said, would you mind if, you know, Ken comes back? A couple days a week and just sits and has lunch with you maybe and it it was a very natural transition into 
having help. Now, this is a very different situation than needing help for showering or, you know, like daily living activities. And that that is a different story and is not as easy of an answer, I would say. I'm going to, I'm going to kick it to you for that one. <laughs> yeah. So we had this situation, my parents, especially my mom didn't want strangers in the house. Yes. And then they would say, we live in a small apartment. We don't want to share our space with a stranger. We mm -hmm. don't need that much help. What would she do here for four hours? If you're using an agency, for instance, typically it's four hours. That's a minimum. And my mom actually expressed what it was like to need help. It was at a really inappropriate moment, but it was the moment where she could express it. It was at my niece's wedding. My sister is a very difficult person. We showed up to support my niece. My sister barely acknowledged us, put us in the farthest <laughs> table possible in the back of the reception hall, really made it clear. And we also knew that we barely got invited. Like mm -hmm. there, we barely got made the invitation list. So at one point we got up from our table and my mom needed to take a break from all the family drama. We were standing outside and she just started say, saying, it is hell to need help. We had to help her up from the table. We had to help her out the door. She said, it is hell to need help. You don't understand the hell it is to need help. Wow. Yes. I think it's hell to need help. There yeah. was a great book that a colleague had written many years ago, and it was called Counting on Kindness. And it was very much around how difficult it is to be in that vulnerable situation of needing help. We want to be able to take care of ourselves. And the, the need of bringing in someone to do that with us, to be in the bathroom with us, to be there while we're showering is such an invasion of our privacy and the level of independence we want to keep. So it makes sense that our caries don't want help. How how open are we going to be to wanting right. help? How open are we going to be? I like to remind ourselves that help is for our carry and help is for ourselves. If a carry is resistant to help, it's really then thinking, okay, well, what do I need in this moment? What do, what help do I need? And getting that help for yourself could be house cleaning. It could be just delegating simple tasks that you have accumulated that you think, I can't do all this. Well, ask someone else to do laundry or whatever it is so that you're not doing everything, whatever you can delegate. And I think we also have to be open to having a conversation with our carries about what's the help that feels okay. My parents didn't want strangers and what my mom came up with was, let's hire family. And it turned out that we had family members in transition, and we hired them. My parents paid for them to come and help 12 hours a week. And that worked out. And it worked out in a really nice way at the end of life for them, especially with my dad. We were able to bring back my niece and nephew who had helped, who came back and then were able to step in and help without a lot of training. They understood my dad. They understood, just make him a gin, a, a, a gin martini. Really, it was just straight up gin. We pretended to add vermouth. <laughs> it, it was a thought of adding vermouth. They knew just to pour him gin at the end of his life. No one thought anything about it. No one asked about it. It was an easy then transition to bringing them back to helping. I guess it's really the conversation around, I worry, I want you to be safe. I also need a little time for myself because my job is demanding right now. What kind of help could help both of us? Yeah. And see where that conversation goes. Yeah, having that really honest conversation, I love that. And I actually love that your mom said, you know, it's hell to need help. Because I think we have to remind ourselves that like, you know, we're in the process of grieving our parents getting older, but they are in the process of grieving the loss of their independence and the loss of those skills that they had. And that's not talked about a whole lot. 
and what that means for them. Like if I give up my keys to the car, how do I get anywhere without, I'm, I'm just, I'm dependent now, you know, if I bring someone in to help with my most personal, you know, moments, ugh, how, how awkward is that? And and is this what my life has become kind of thing? You know, I mean, I'm sure there's those conversations that go on. So I love that you bring that up about the vulnerability because we don't think about that. We just think, God, I just wish my mom would get in the shower, you know, <laughs> just to get somebody in here to help. <laughs> yeah, what's like, the big deal? Right. What's the big deal? You're what's asking her to get naked in front of a stranger and have them help her with it's one of the most personal things. Like, we would never let that happen, you know? So remembering what we're really asking. And it's the conversation and it's also the process. And something that we can think about doing is if there is an agreement to have help, and it could be hiring, for instance, a home health aid, thinking about what can we do when that process starts to happen? What can we put in place so that our carry is a little more comfortable with the process. What can we do to be a part of that process if, if appropriate to make it a little easier? It, I, yeah, it, it's a shocking experience, I think, to have someone help you. As you were talking about that, I was thinking about my son who were, he's transitioning schools. And we're like, oh, he is gonna have the hardest time we need to make some visits over there to make sure he's comfortable first. We need to meet the teacher. It's like, we need to do the same thing for our, for our parents and for other loved ones we take care of because transitions are hard when you don't have, you know, issues. When you've got cognitive decline and things like that, so much harder too. And it's kind of interesting when we think about some of the things that we just think naturally should happen. So I think, for instance, about the first day in adult day program, mm -hmm. it could be that, that a van comes to get your carry and you just put your carry on a van and just cross your fingers. Well, what if you thought through that process of the first time I'm going to go with my carry on the van, I'm yeah. going to see what it's like, what, when they get off the van and go into the program, knowing everybody is going to be lovely and nice, but it's just nice to keep them company as you, as they go through this very new experience, being vulnerable in a new location with new people, with a new program. It's scary. Yeah. And to have that calming presence of you can be helpful. Yeah. I guess it's the conversation too of, okay, we're thinking about getting more help, mom. I know this is tough. I, I dread it myself. I'm wondering how you are feeling about it. And yeah, then, I'm asking them to really express yeah, that because right. they probably don't get asked that question a whole lot. Right. What do you worry about with having help? Yeah. What can I do so that it feels a little better? What can I do to help? Like, how would we want, if it were me and I was going to have help with something that was with my body or something very personal, how would I want that to go down? And thinking that through, you know, if you aren't sure kind of how to do it, what would I want? Well, I'd, I'd want to know the person. I'd want to be comfortable with them. I wouldn't just want, you know, maybe I wouldn't want a man being in there. I, you know, like things to consider that way um, would be a really kind of great place to start. So the challenge can be with the direct care workforce shortage. We might mm -hmm. not have as much choice about who yes. helps. And I think it's then putting ourselves into the situation to take care of the choice, meaning that maybe it's the first time when the home health aid comes, we are there. We yeah. stay home. We're there for the full four hours just to make sure everybody is okay. And the other thing is, I always wanted my parents to tell me if something was not going right. Even if it felt like, gosh, that's kind of a crazy thing to complain about. I always wanted to know because then I would know how to resolve the problem when it was small before it became big. Yes. Yeah. It's always easier to do it earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Adding help is 
a huge change. It's a big adjustment. And it's around being gracious with ourselves and our carries as to how to how to make that happen. The challenge, of course, is we don't necessarily feel like we have the time and energy to be gracious because yeah. we need the help. We need the help. We need the help. We need the help. And we're usually at the point where we're super burnt out when the help does, when that stage hits, you know. Yeah. Um, but just remembering that compassion and um, thinking through the situation as if it were you. Yeah. And to also say, okay, I'm running into a roadblock around my carry receiving help. What will help me? Yeah. And it's worth it because having that help is going to make such a difference for everyone, but it really will take a load off of you. And so to put that little extra effort in to get it right the first time or the second time, you know, um, is worth, is worth the effort. I also remind myself, if I'm going to suggest that others receive help, I have to receive help. Mm, so important. Yeah. I have to live it too. Yeah. Okay. Those were our three questions for today. Good discussion. Yeah. We'd love for you to write to us and let us know the questions and challenges that you're encountering. We are committed to figuring this out for you. <laughs> we want to figure it out for you. You can write to us at questions at caringourway.com. And if you write us a question and you want to join us live, we would love for you to do that as well. So we do broadcast live on the first Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, which is 1 p.m. Central time, which is 11 a.m. Pacific time. Yes. And Jennifer's in California. I'm in Chicago. We'd love for you to join us if you can. Otherwise, we'll read the question and offer insights and suggestions with our big thanks for all you do and appreciation for all you're really focused on and committed to. And having questions means you care. It yes. Means you get it right. So yes. ask away. Yeah. Yeah, ask away, ask away, ask away, ask away. That's why in the six stages, the first keyword is to ask. Yes. Ask, ask, ask. Okay, Jennifer, for our viewers who'd like to know more about your coaching practice, how can they be in touch with you? They can reach me at becomingbravecoaching.com or jennifer at becomingbravecoaching.com. And I'd be happy to meet with anyone interested. Excellent. And you are welcome also to join us on our community, caringourway.com. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.